has anyone not ever heard about Firefly? Okay. All right. I, I can, I'll take one hand seriously there. Definitely not the other hand. Okay. Well, it's a really exciting project, which is up on the timeline here. So it's one of the newer projects in the Hyperledger Foundation. And it's trying to solve a particular problem, which I'm, I'm showing in this diagram here, where there's an existing company with their existing systems, and they're looking out at the Web3 space, and, and it looks pretty daunting and confusing, right? And the, the shape that we see these projects taking is you understand that there's infrastructure that's needed to, to connect out to Web3, but to build an application, there's also a whole technology stack that the application itself needs uh, in, in order to actually run reliably, connect to things, you know, store data, and so forth. And so the idea of having a Web3 gateway that makes it really easy to connect out to lots of different technologies that are out in this big, wild world of Web3, um, that's, the, that's the idea behind the Firefly technology. We like to describe it as a Gen 2 approach. Uh, so in Gen 1, there were people who were just writing reams and reams of code in order to connect out to various blockchain technologies. In fact, we, we actually, when we looked at it, over 80% of the code in the project was all plumbing code to try to integrate reliably with the blockchain system. And here you, we've, we have this picture on the left-hand side with the, the technology stack. Um, and in the Gen 1 approach, you're, all of that's a bunch of custom code uh, that gets built. But of course, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. Your poor old business application at the top of the stack you know, is where all the business value is for a project. And so wouldn't it be great if you could just spend all of your time or the vast majority of your time all the way at the top of the layer of the stack driving business value? And wouldn't it be great if the open source community hardened all of these other modules and gave you a nice, robust, reliable, unopinionated gateway that connected out to many different kinds of Web3 technologies? That's Firefly. This is the, uh, the, the architecture view. Um, at the core of it is uh, an orchestration engine uh, with an event bus that's backing it. There's a database that's tracking all of the different state and indexing uh, the various chains that you're connecting to, so all of the, the state uh, with that. That's all part of the core of Firefly. Sitting on top of that are the three pillars of APIs you see in the colors. There is an application API which basically will ingest your smart contracts and will auto-generate a friendly you know, APIs for those. So no, no more low-level coding to connect to a smart contract. You can now just, just connect to friendly APIs. There's a flow API. The flow API helps with complex workflows or business processes. What we often see, especially for enterprise projects, is there, there are complex workflows. And often those workflows actually span across multiple parties doing different things. Data gets ex uh, exchanged on-chain, data gets exchanged off-chain. Those two things are tied together in, in complex workflows, and so there's a flow API. And then of course, not needing any introduction is the digital asset API, uh, but things like you know, managing tokens. It has, a Firefly has the construct of a, a token pool that you can define. Um, and, and from that, it just makes a lot of tasks of, of tokenizing things and, and tracking tokens and so forth a lot easier. So that's, that's basically Firefly uh, in a nutshell. If there's any quick questions on Firefly that folks want, want to ask, I'll take that and then I'll turn it over to, to Shadbin to talk about some real world examples. Any quick questions on Firefly? Yeah. I guess how for specific open source projects might be managed. But what's the general process of that? Open source projects into Firefly. Specifically with Firefly? Yeah. Yeah. So the the question was, there's there's all kinds of of open source out there. You know, if a community wanted to, um, for example, plug in to Firefly what would the process be to do that? 
Um, so I think that's a great question. And Firefly is, is like this big middleware engine, this gateway engine. And so by definition, it, it actually touches many different places. So there's a different diagram I don't have here, but um, you know things like custody and different wallet technologies, for example. Because Firefly is the middleware stack your application sitting on top of, it also connects out to wallets, right, and different wallet technologies. Um, you know, chain infrastructure is another one, but also, you know, storage like IPFS. Um, so the, the approach for Firefly is to be very unopinionated, multi-protocol, not religious, is how I sometimes describe it. Um, and so every single, you know, there's a connector framework layer not pictured here, everything is very pluggable by design. To, to connect to a wallet, there's a generic, you know, plug point API. So by design, it's really easy to plug into. Um, even, you know, connecting to a blockchain, there's the, in the connector framework layer, there's something called EVM Connect, which, you know, connects out to, to can, can be configured to connect to any EVM style chain. There's Fab Connect, which connects out to Hyperledger Fabric. Other communities today are looking at, UT, you know, for example, UTXO-based communities are working on a contribution for a UTXO Connect style. So depending on what community it is, Firefly is run through this, the, the open governance process of the Linux Foundation. So by design, there's no company that's like controlling Firefly. There's a very open governance process that's, that's standardized. So there are community calls every two or every four weeks that are completely open. They're out on the Hyperledger site. You can you know get on the listserv, subscribe to those, just show up to the call. And in, indeed, other communities, I know Tezos was one that's recently, uh, Cardano is another community. Um, there, there's different folks that are looking at kind of plugging in. And um, it's, it's just that simple. Yep. That was a long answer to a relatively short question. But hard to prove the answer. All right, Simon, come on up. I think there's either a second deck. Is, is this all one long deck or is there a second one? Thank you, Steve. You set me up real well. All right. So I'm Shadman Hussain. I, uh, I'm from CGI Federal. I lead their emerging technology practice. And today I'll be talking about driving digital transformation in government, specifically with Hyperledger and Firefly. So just a quick overview of the agenda. I'll be going over some introduction about who CGI is and how we're bringing Web3 to the government and also lay out some use cases that we're supporting across our different business sectors. So first, CGI is a government contractor. Specifically, I work for CGI Federal. We're over 7,000 members. We're serving over 100 government clients across the uh, United States federal government. So just a geogra uh, geographical footprint, we have you know, offices, delivery centers across uh, the country. I'm specifically from DC, as some people like to call it the swamp. Uh, strategically placed to drain it. So I'm trying to bring Web3 to the government so we can bring that trust back. Let's, let's a show of hands, who trusts the government? Who trusts the government? Uh, okay, so you, you live in Denmark, so that's a good government to trust. Uh, but, but my team specifically focuses on emerging tech on Web3. So, you know, this topic, everybody in this room already knows Web3, so I don't have to explain the, the evolution of where we're headed, but at CGI, we're starting to build products. What, the number one product I'm working on is called C Secure Data Fabric which is leveraging Firefly under, under the hood and positioning this as a Web3 product for the government that they can leverage across different use cases. So what does Web3 mean to me? It's not just blockchain or distributed ledger. It's a combination of several technologies like AI, IoT, and edge compute. All these things together combined is what makes Web3. So how? what is the vision of us turning this into a reality? So. What we're trying to do is enable this word you might have heard before called zero trust. What does that mean? That means to verify before access. You verify all devices, all users, all networks, and that's how you establish this zero trust infrastructure. 
Now, what I see is Web3 is a component of enabling that zero trust infrastructure. So imagine a world where you have your DoD network, you know, everybody has their own app-specific blockchain that they're running. DHS, CDP, Space Force, everyone has their immutable chain that can connect to commercial su uh, supply chain networks, that can connect to academia. They can all collaborate and share data with zero trust. And so the question is, why does the government need to move from Web 2 to Web 3? And I, this is my job to talk to them to make them understand why Web 3 is valuable. The first step you have to do is show the problem. What is the problem with Web 2? So on the left hand side, you see this is our Web 2 architecture. It's a spaghetti of a mess. And that's the biggest problem is this centralized architecture is creating all these data silos. That is the reason why we can't share data easily. And that's the reason why very few companies have been able to leverage data and collaborate. And specifically government agencies, they don't talk to each other. You'd be surprised. You'd think they're all collaborating, but they're not. And so part of the reason why 9-11 happened is because an agency wanted to take credit for it first. And so they didn't collaborate in real time to prevent the disaster. So this is a much bigger deal. It's to protect national security so disasters like that don't happen. And that is where the Web3 architecture comes in, where we're using Firefly, as Steve mentioned, it is an agnostic tool, right? So imagine a decentralized data architecture to break down these data silos. And I want to hi highlight four things. Number one, we're enabling to trust the untrusted. Even government agencies don't trust each other. So think about, forget other folks. The second piece is auditability. And auditability is one of the biggest requirements coming out of the government. And I'll talk about this later in my use case. Now, these two things enable you to collaborate in almost real time, and this is key, at the speed of mission. Right now, sensor urgency and mission is one of the critical components. So what are the building blocks? And this is, from my perspective, these are the building blocks we would need for us to adopt Web3 in the government. And these are like Lego blocks. The first Lego block you see is the identity layer. We need to create decentralized identities for all people, all systems, all assets. Once you have this decentralized identity laid out, you can move on to the access control layer. This is where you're defining who can access your data, who can access your algorithms. Then you move on to the immersive AR, VR world by connecting that data point. Now the fourth piece that people don't recognize in the government is that incentive layer. Without this incentive layer, blockchain Web3 doesn't make sense. And this incentive layer is what's going to encourage that collaboration to happen. And the last piece, the most challenging, the scariest piece is the governance layer. Because all the other layers before it are going to be defined through the governance layer. How do you define the encryption? What is going to be your cloud and hardware configuration? How do you do that in a decentralized way, especially when you're a government that's meant to be centralized? So these are the building blocks. And how are we building it? We're using Firefly as that toolbox that zero trust toolbox. So I want to mention the executive summary of the executive order by the president uh, at 2021 around zero trust. Zero trust has to be implemented across every government application. And so this is now a priority. So at CGI, we're leveraging Hyperledger Firefly as that toolbox to implement zero trust under zero knowledge to our federal clients. And so the first use case I want to talk about um, is defense. So what we're working on is transforming the DoD supply chain with zero trust. So one of the biggest problems, and this might be a shocker, the DoD has never passed an audit. Ever. It's been five, yeah, you said five years, right? So five audits and they've filled up. Right. And there's a reason. We don't know where our items are. We don't know where the money is going. And so this is not a malicious thing it just they have not started tracking this until recently so what i'm passionate about is how do we fix this problem of trust and lack of auditing like how do i get the dod to pass an audit and that is what we're working on using security data fabric that's leveraging firefly we want to bring that interoperability the immune immutability and the incentives now the biggest question and the challenge that i get when i talk to the government is how the heck are you going to scale? That's everyone's question. How do you scale blockchain? Because everybody knows blockchain doesn't scale. So if we implement this across all the federal agencies, 
can they handle it? And so that's part of the reason why we are using hyperelectric fireflies because it is so agnostic that we can plug into any type of standard that the government decides, whether it's an EVM or a DAG-based chain, we don't know what that standard will be. So how do you best hedge yourself against that decision? And so that's why we are positioned with Firefly, is because it's agnostic, it doesn't care. It can plug into any type of architecture, any type of tool. So the question I asked is, can we bring trust back to the DOD using Web3? And I'm betting the answer is yes. And I'm fighting for it. So the second one, and this is super exciting for me because as a child I wanted to go to space. Um, I, I dreamt about being an astronaut. But our space sector is now looking at tokenizing the space economy with zero trust. So as you know, we're sending satellites, we're sending you know, uh, space rockets up into space again. And so how do you now get us, people like us, involved in that journey? There's a huge lack of just trust, but also accessibility. Uh, in the space economy. So what we're doing is trying to leverage secure data fabric using Hyperledger Firefly to tokenize space assets. Images being taken through satellites, tokenize them as NFTs. Now you can incentivize the companies to share that data that they were never going to share before and allow folks like us to have fractional ownership of those assets in the space economy. So the challenge that I'm facing is how do you scale with limited computing? I mean, blockchain barely works in on Earth. Now you're asking me to put it up in space? I mean, so that's a, that's a challenge, but this is the opportunity here. We're talking about creating the space economy. Not on Earth, on space. So eventually we're gonna become multi-planetary species thanks to Elon. Once we get there, this is going to become a need. And so I love this last question I made up because this hit me last night and I, and I came up with it, was uh, can we create zero trust economies in zero gravity environments? All I'm talking about is just, can we do this in space, okay? But I really love that zero trust economy and zero gravity. Uh, I, I'm gonna coin that as a concept now, but this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this a real thing. This is a very sensitive topic, obviously, around intelligence. So this is for our intelligence business sector. It's around securing, meta securing metaverse assets with zero trust. So right now, there's a huge push towards digital twinning. The government is digital twinning everything, from warehouses to military gear to all these assets. But now these are like the blueprints of the real world. So if somebody bad gets access to your metaverse assets, it's going to be a big problem. So we're using Firefly as this robust tool for creating, managing, these assets in the metaverse with access control. So question is, how do you safeguard these metaverse assets? Um, we've started work with uh, George Mason University. We're calling this module Beacon, Blockchain Enabled Access Control, to do this, to make this a reality. The last one, actually we have one more, but that was a uh, icing on the cake after this, is uh, the healthcare industry this is, I mean, I think we all face this problem. When you go to the doctor's office, you have to fill in the same information over and over again. You switch providers, you have to do that same thing over and over again. So we're trying to use Hyperledger Firefly for data sharing in healthcare under zero trust. And so you get a ton of benefits, patient, improved patient care, uh, security with a zero trust architecture. But the biggest important thing is accelerated medical research. Imagine if every university was collaborating with all the healthcare agencies, we can prevent the next pandemic. And so if we can own our digital healthcare records, give people back the data ownership, this becomes a possibility. And this is part of our work with uh, University of Tennessee where we built out a healthcare digital wallet to pilot this concept. Now this, this, is, a, this is a very timely topic about AI. So ethical AI transparency. This is a big problem where Elon and a lot of the smartest folks in, in the planet have essentially created a petition to stop AI development. Because if we don't get this under control, this can potentially destroy humanity. And so I, have, I, I, I was saying this to a few folks here that blockchain doesn't need AI, AI needs blockchain. And the reason is we do not have any transparency into these models, how they're created, what type of data is going in there. 
So we need to be able to have a way to protect bias and foster ethical AI. If we don't do that, if we don't create sustainable and ethical AI, we're gonna be screwed. And a lot of people agree with that. So the question is, can we create transparent, accountable, ethical AI? Forget the government use cases, can we do that? And that is a, a big question that we, all of us, needs to answer. And I hope you can join me in this journey to answer this question, because I haven't figured this one out yet. Now, the last, uh, tying it all together, Hyperledger Firefly has enabled my team to move at the speed of mission. So before I joined CGI, we were creating everything from scratch. We're talking your read and writes to your ledger, you know, everything was being done from scratch with a team of 10. It took about two years to build out. And so when I came on, I realized, why are we wasting so much resources and money to reinvent the wheel over and over again? And so we shifted to Firefly, and now with going from two years of development to now two weeks, imagine that. We are saving so much time, money, energy, and resources because of Firefly. And it is giving us a return on our investments, and our clients obviously are seeing the result because now we're focusing on actual business use cases, not the middleware and the plumbing and the infrastructure. It's all about how do we bring in real world use cases. This technology is cool, but half of the time I feel like we create our own problems to create our own solutions, and the rest of the world doesn't care, right? And so this is why we're so aligned with Hyperledger Fireflies, because that speed to mission is key in the government right now, because obviously there's a war going on, right? And so in order to protect us and ourselves, we need to align and bring that trust back to the DOD, because it's not just about us, it's about protecting the future of the free world. So I invite you all to join us in this journey to transform the government through progressive decentralization with Web3. Thank you. Any questions? None? Okay. Well, if you need to talk, uh, just find me and, uh, you know, I won't shut up about these use cases because I spend a lot of time at night just... Uh, not sleeping. So, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Physical assets, change, right. right physical. Uh, it, it was financial as well. I'm pushing for financial as well, and I'm glad you brought that up. So I go to these conferences with a bunch of government folks, and, I, and I'm in the room, and a lot of them are saying, we want transparency, we want auditability. And I, and I straight up, no, no, nothing holding back, and I tell them, you say you want it, but I know half this room doesn't actually want it. You don't really mean it. Because guess what? Once you you can't take it back, right? And that's that's the that's the problem here. We have people in leadership that still want the old system, right? Because what does it mean to have a transparent system? It means to have accountability. Nobody wants that accountability. Because if you make the wrong call, that's on chain forever. And that's gonna be on you. So if you're a general, if you're a military person, you make a wrong call, that's there to be audited forever. Versus now if you want to off of paper, off chain, you can, and nobody will know. You know, right now it's truly ZK. Nobody knows. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's um, the sort of like CBDCs. It's like they want surveillance for us, but not. So I think a CBDC or I mean, I'm not a fan of the CB. Period. DC right. Is fine. But the um, but if there is a use case, it's in government transactions. Oh, 100 percent. Start with you first. I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. So I, I I have the approach of the Trojan horse, which is they want to surveil and regulate everybody else here, but why don't you do it for yourself first? And so how do you set that up? How do you do a Trojan horse of Web3 into the government? So they won't even know that it's Web3. It will just be. 
and that's the vision. They will just have it as an immutable database. They're just going on about their lives. But now that immutable, transparent accounting layer is there. And so that's the challenge is people say they want it, but we know they don't. But here's the, the bright side. A lot of the folks in leadership today, unfortunately, will be retiring and dying off. And there's a younger generation with a with a open mind coming right and so now when our generation of folks that can have the mindset of a decentralized version where we want accountability we want traceability i have hope that in the next few years that will change because the leadership of the country is changing so i'm hoping dc thing it's concerning but that's why we need to play a part in the creation of it so we can turn it back on the government not have them point it at us and so this is like i said the biggest trojan horse is to help the government get more transparent and accountable because it helps us all as citizens. I love that you brought that up. I mean, imagine the United States of Daos. Uh, actually, there's a person running for president in 2028 under the platform United States of Daos. He already has my vote. I hope he does too. I'm already shilling for his campaign. But uh, yes. Any other questions? Well, thank you.